بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Verily, all praise be to Allah. We praise him and seek his forgiveness. We seek protection in Allah from the evil of our own souls. Whomsoever Allah guides, no one can misguide. And whomsoever Allah allows to go astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a slave and messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah tells us in the Quran that all you who believe fear Allah according to his right and die not but as Muslims. Thereafter listen to it that the best of the words are that of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the best of the part is that of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and anything but that is an innovation and all innovations are misleading and all misleadings lead to hellfire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us for a purpose. Allah created the human beings and anything and everything that is there in the universe for a reason. For human beings and jinn. We have heard this ayah many a times. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ That I have not created man or jinn except to worship me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the universe for us to ponder over it. To learn about the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the Jibal, the mountains. Allah created the animals. Allah created anything and everything in the seas. Allah created the sea for us to understand how great Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. And Allah says, قُلْ لَوْ كَانَ الْبَحْرُ مِدَادًا لِكَلِمَاتِ رَبِّي لَنَفِدَ الْبَحْرُ قَبْلَ أَن تَنْفَدَ كَلِمَاتُ رَبِّي وَلَوْ جِئْنَا بِمِثْلِهِ مَدَدَ That if you were to bring the sea and the sea becomes the ink and with the ink that you write the, about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the sea would finish, the ink would finish, but you will not be able to complete the writing about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the summary of the ayah. And from that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the Jannah for us to see that what we will get in the Akhirah, in the hereafter. And from that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created and given us information about the hell or the hellfire. Allah has given us this information or when we learn about this in the Quran or in the sayings of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there is a reason. The reason that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala tells us about Jahannam, the hell, so that we deter from committing sins. So that we, are, so we stay away from doing anything which is wrong or displeasing to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Today is 29 or 30 degrees. Tomorrow is said that it's going to be the hottest day of the year. It is going to be about 32 or 33 degrees in London. Abu Huraira mentions that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, النَّارُ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهَا The hell complained to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. اِشْتَكَتِ النَّارُ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهَا فَقَالَتْ رَبِّي أَكَلَ بَعْضِي بَعْضًا That the hell complained to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and said, oh Allah, Part of me is eating me and, you know, is complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about what is happening within the hell because the purpose of hell is what? To burn. So it's burning and burning and burning. So the Jahannam, because it's been given life by Allah, complained to Allah. اِشْتَكَتِ النَّارُ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهَا فَقَالَ أَكَلَ بَعْضِي بَعْضًا فَقَالَ رَبِّي أَكَلَ بَعْضِي بَعْضًا Oh my Lord, oh my Rabb, part of me i.e. Jahannam has eaten me. So what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do? فَأَذِنَ لَهَا بِنَفَسَيْنِ نَفَسٍ فِي الشِّتَاء وَنَفَسٍ فِي الصَّيْفِ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed the Jahannam to breathe, to take two breaths. To breathe twice. 
So the Jahannam took a breath or breath twice. فَأَشَدُّ مَا تَجِدُونَ فِي الْحَرْ وَأَشَدُّ مَا تَجِدُونَ مِنْ زَمِنَ الزَّمْهَرِينَ So the hotness that we find during the summer is the breath, the breath that the Jahannam took. And the second breath or the, th- the, breath, the second one or one of them, the Jahannam took was during the time of winter when it becomes the coldest. If this is the breath of Jahannam and while we are in this dunya, and we cannot bear the heat of this dunya. Imagine the fire of Jahannam, the hell, which is 69 times greater than what we have over here. The Prophet wasallam said in one of the hadiths, in one narration, the summary of it being that if you were to see what I see or what I have seen, then you would cry a lot. You would run away from it. It is mentioned in the Quran, إِذَا رَأَتْهُمْ مِنْ مَكَانٍ بَعِيدٍ سَمِهُ لَهَا تَغَيُّزًا وَزَفِيرًا That when the Jahannam will see the people coming from a distance, they will see the Jahannam roaring. They will see the Jahannam coming. They will see the Jahannam asking for people to be put into it. So much so that Allah says in the Quran, هَلِمْ تَلَعْتْ Allah will ask the Jahannam, are you filled or you have space while knowing about it? And the Jahannam will say no. And Allah will put more people in. If we cannot bear the heat or the hotness or the heat wave that we have in this dunya, my brothers and sisters, what will happen to us on the day when there will not be any other shade other than the shade of, other than the shade of the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shade. These are mere trials that we have and we will face in this dunya. And these trials of going through this heat wave is there for me to remember Allah is the Khaliq. Allah is the Raziq. Allah is the Asami and Al Basir, the one who hears and the one who sees, the one who creates. And Allah is looking at me for each and every second of my life. And Allah knows what I do during each and every second of my life. So the reminder that Allah created the Jahannam is for me to understand. And when I go through the heat in this dunya, is to make tawbah to Allah. It's to do istighfar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the shortcomings that me and you have on regular basis. That we don't recognize Allah. And you know, it may be my brothers and sisters that we say la ilaha illallah. We say we are Muslims. So what do the scholars mean by not recognizing Allah when we don't follow the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is as if we are rejecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when I'm walking on the street and I see a half naked woman, instead of turning my face away, my eyes fall on him, on, on her. And when it comes to the opposite gender, the same thing happened. That is not being from the followers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The iman is that we say, or well, we turn our face away from it. That temporary satisfaction that the shaitan will always try for us to go for. Remember Allah is there. And Al-Har of Jahannam is Ashad. Is more severe than the heat or the fire of this dunya. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam reminds us again and again. That if a person will be from the people of Jahannam. And they will get hungry. And they will ask Allah for food. So what will happen? Allah being the Khaliq, Allah being the Raziq, will provide them, will give them food. But and their food will be from the food of Jahannam, from the hell. And what is the food from Jahannam? It's going to be from the tree of Zakum. And what is Zakum? Zakum is a tree that is at the bottom of the hell. And the nourishment of the tree is the pus and the blood that comes out from the people suffering the punishment in Jahannam. So when they will eat or drink from the water or from the oil that will be given to the people of Jahannam, as they will drink, everything will melt. And their punishment will not stop. Unless they believed in Allah and they made tawbah to Allah and they wanted to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this har, this heat wave that we have, is a reminder from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the heat of Jahannam, the fire, is much greater than the one that we have. And the reminder from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is this, 
that Allah from his greatness, from his creation could have chosen me to become something else. But he chose me and you to say la ilaha illallah. He chose me to and you to stand up and glorify him. He from his greatness chose me and you to make sujda to him and glorify him and ask for his forgiveness. We should do this sincerely. We should repent to Allah sincerely and we should remind ourselves again and again that my focus or the purpose is to worship Allah and all of the things that I see in this dunya, may it be that is temporary satisfaction. Let me focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا فَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ لِي وَلَكُمْ بَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره قال الله تعالى في قرآن الكريم إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم وصل عليه brothers we have families we have friends we have relatives and they are all Muslims or most of them as a head of the household the responsibility is on me is on my shoulders when Allah says, Ya you and Ladina Manuku and Fasakum wa Ahli Kum Nara, that oh you believe protect yourself and your family from the fire of hell. This is something that I need to remember that as to set up a role model for my family or being a role model for my family, I need to practice Islam by myself as a first. So as an individual, I need to make sure that in order to be protected from the fire of hell. I am constantly remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm doing the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I am asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide me and keep me steadfast on this deen while I'm surrounded by all the, the possibilities of committing sins or opportunities. And then my family, that I guide them, I give them guidance, I tell them what needs to be done. But I do it in a way that the Prophet sallallahu did. That how he related with his family, how he related with his children, how he was close to with his children. And then the response from the youngsters, because most of you are young, to their family members, their parents has to be out of respect. What we find these days that the name or when we call out the word respect is just by mere by name. The children don't respect their parents and the parents in return are frustrated or become frustrated. Taban, it goes both ways. Because if we don't set a, or set a good model for our children, the children will not follow. And then when we will ask them to do something, i.e. recite Quran or stay away from harm or haram, because they have not seen me do something which is right, they will not follow me. So I have to set an example. But youngsters, don't look at your parents only. If it is the case, or it has been the case, that you did not find your elders to be doing something which is right, this is a test for you. You know what is right and you know what is wrong. Follow what is right. Make sure that you respect them. Make sure that you honor them. Make sure you take care of them. For this dunya is there as an opportunity. I can benefit from it by doing something which is good. As Allah says, Ya amanu amilu salihat, That all oh, you believe perform good actions. Or, or I can do something which is against it. All of this, my brothers and sisters, is a reminder and opportunity from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of us are mature enough to understand what is right and what is wrong. If there has been a time when I have committed a sin or I've had some kind of shortcomings, let me remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there for me to be forgiven. But I need to take that step to ask Allah for forgiveness. I need to have remorse in my heart to ask Allah for forgiveness. I need to recognize the fact that Allah tells me, Wallahu yuridu an yatuba alaykum. Allah wants you to make repentance to him, make tawbah to him. Allah is not saying just ask for forgiveness. Allah is saying make tawbah, make repentance, sincere repentance. Why? So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, another ayah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may forgive your shortcomings. And Allah is there, my brothers and sisters, for each and every one of us. No one is greater in the sight of Allah other than 
them performing actions that will bring them closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And every person has the opportunity to come close to him. We need to make sure that we start from now rather than wait at a later stage. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our shortcomings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the Jahannam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the punishment of hell. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq that we come close to him and love him and worship him in the best possible manner. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive the people that who have passed away. ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكوننا من الخاسرين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداء الدين واحمي حوزة الإسلام يا رب العالمين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين